Tommy Morrison, January 2, 1969 to September 1, 2013, was an American professional boxer and mixed martial artist who competed from 1988 to 2009. Best known for his left hook and formidable punching power, Morrison won the WBO heavyweight title in 1993 with a unanimous decision victory over George Foreman. He lost the title in his second defense to Michael Bent that same year. Morrison's other boxing highlights include his fight with Ray Mercer in 1991 and with Donovan Reddick in 1995. Morrison is also known for his acting career, having starred alongside Sylvester Stallone in the 1990 film Rocky V as Tommy Gunn. He retired from boxing in 1996 after testing positive for HIV. Morrison made a brief comeback to boxing from 2007 to 2008 when the Nevada Commission lifted the indefinite worldwide suspension in July 2006 and briefly dabbled in the world of MMA. As a mixed martial artist, he scored a notable first-round knockout win over Wyoming State heavyweight champion Corey Williams in 2009, which ultimately became the last fight Morrison ever had in combat sports before his final retirement due to his declining health that began in 2011. On September 1, 2013, Morrison died at the age of 44 from sepsis, septic shock, multi-system organ failure and, ultimately, cardiac arrest. Early life and amateur career Morrison was born in Gravette, Arkansas. His mother, Diana, was Native American, half Ponca and half Odo, and his father Tim was of Scottish ancestry. Morrison was raised in Delaware County, Oklahoma, spending most of his teenage years in jail. His nickname, The Duke, is based on the claim that he was a grandnephew, or otherwise distant relative, of the Hollywood star John Wayne, Na Marion Morrison, nicknamed Duke. Tommy's father urged him to take up boxing in the 1970s. When Tommy was 13 years old, his mother used a fake ID and entered her son into 15 tough man contests, the minimum age for contestants was 21. He later told the New York Times that he lost only one of these matches. After graduating from high school in 1988, Morrison received a football scholarship to Emporia State University. In the same year, Morrison won the regional heavyweight title, Kansas City Golden Gloves from Donald Ellis and advanced to the National Golden Gloves in Omaha, Nebraska, where he decisioned Javier Alvarez in the preliminaries, decisioned Warren Williams in the quarterfinals, but lost a split decision to Derek Asalman in the semifinals. Two weeks later, Morrison took part in the Western Olympic trials in Houston, Texas, defeating Robert Hargrove by a 4-1 majority decision in the semifinals, and John Bray by a 5-0 unanimous decision in the finals, and qualifying for the nationals, and garnering the Outstanding Fighter Award of the tournament. Two weeks after that, fighting out of Republic, Missouri, at the National Olympic Trials in Concord, California, July 6, 1988, Morrison lost a 0-5 unanimous decision to Ray Mercer, who went on to win the gold medal at the Seoul Olympics. They also had a prior matchup scheduled to be held June 16, 1988, at the Felt Forum, New York City, but it is not known why it did not take place. As an amateur, Morrison claimed 222 fights, most of which were local matchups, with the 1988 Olympic trials being the top of his amateur career. His amateur record is 202 wins, 20 losses. Professional career further information, Ray Mercer vs. Tommy Morrison, George Foreman vs. Tommy Morrison, Tommy Morrison vs. Michael Bent, Tommy Morrison vs. Donovan Reddick, and Lennox Lewis vs. Tommy Morrison Early career Morrison started his professional boxing career on November 10, 1988, with a first-round knockout of William Muhammad in New York City. Three weeks later, he scored another first-round knockout. In 1989, Morrison had 19 wins and zero losses, 15 by knockout. That same year, actor Sylvester Stallone, after watching one of Morrison's bouts, arranged a script reading and cast Morrison in the movie Rocky V as Tommy the Machine Gun, a young and talented protege of the retired Rocky Balboa. Morrison took a six-month break from boxing to work on the movie in 1990. From December 8, 1989, until June 8, 1990, Morrison did not compete in a boxing match, due both to injuries and his involvement in Rocky V. 
In 1991, Morrison won four bouts, including notable victories against opponents James Tillis, the first man to take Mike Tyson the distance, and former WBC heavyweight champion Pink Juan Thomas. Morrison vs. Mercer Morrison was then given an opportunity to face fellow undefeated fighter Ray Mercer, the WBO title holder in a pay-per-view card held on October 18, 1991. The fight was a matchup between two undefeated, up-and-coming heavyweights. The bout had been scheduled for August 9, but Morrison withdrew due to an injury. Tommy Morrison, on left, Steve Lott and Sylvester Stallone on June 6, 1990 Morrison got off to a great start, outboxing a sluggish Mercer through the first three rounds en route to taking all three rounds on all three of the judges' scorecards. Mercer would end the fight only 28 seconds into the fifth round. With Morrison backed up into the corner, Mercer was able to land a 15-punch combination. Clearly hurt from the exchange, Morrison slumped against the ropes, but the referee allowed Mercer to land several more punishing blows to a now defenseless Morrison before finally ending the fight. Morrison suffered the first loss of his career, losing by fifth round knockout. Career from 1991 to 1993, he had six wins in 1992, including fights with Art Tucker and Joe Hip, who later became the first Native American to challenge for the world heavyweight title. In the hip fight, held June 19, 1992, Morrison was suffering from what was later discovered to be a broken hand and broken jaw, but rallied to score a knockout in the ninth round. WBO heavyweight champion Morrison vs. Foreman after two wins in 1993, including one over two-time world title challenger Carl The Truth Williams, Morrison found himself fighting for the WBO title again against heavyweight boxing legend George Foreman. Though the bout was promoted as a match between two of boxing's hardest punchers, neither fighter scored a knockdown nor had their opponent in any real danger, Morrison chose to avoid brawling with Foreman and spent the fight boxing from long range. He was able to hit and move effectively in this manner. Morrison won the bout in a lopsided unanimous decision with two scores of 117 to 110 and one score of 118 to 109, which resulted in him becoming the new WBO heavyweight champion in the process. Morrison vs. Tomashek originally. Morrison's first title defense was scheduled against his Rocky V co star Mike Williams in August 1993. Williams ultimately withdrew on the night of the fight, so Tim Tomashek stood in as a replacement. Tomashek had been selected as an alternate. Tomashek had been drinking before the bout, not believing Williams to have really backed out, yet still was able to reel off several of Morrison's combinations. Though Tomashek gave a good account of himself and won the first round on the judges' cards, Morrison fought conservatively but dropped his opponent with a multi punch combination, and the fight was stopped by Tomashek's corner after only four rounds due to him walking to the wrong corner. After his brutal punishment by Morrison, the WBO was later said to have rescinded their sanctioning of this fight due to Tomashek's lack of experience, but this was later confirmed to have been a rumor as fight records show the fight to have remained a bona fide title bout. Morrison vs. Bent almost immediately, talks of a fight with WBC champion Lennox Lewis began for re-establishing him as one of the top heavyweight contenders. Morrison then agreed to the lucrative WBC title shot against Lewis that would see Lewis make the fourth defense of his title against Morrison, with both men evenly splitting a $16 million purse. However, Morrison first chose to take a tune-up bout against the virtually unknown Michael Bent before facing Lewis. The decision would prove to be unwise as Bent brutalized Morrison during their fight, knocking him down three times 97 seconds into the first round in front of a live HBO boxing audience, after which the fight was stopped and Bent was named the winner. The loss cost Morrison his title shot against Lewis, as well as a reported $7.5 million that he was to earn in the Lewis fight. Career from 1994 to 1996 Morrison recovered by winning three bouts in a row in 1994, but his last fight of the year, against Ross Purity, ended with a draw, before he landed a WBO heavyweight title fight against Herbie Hyde on the infamous High Noon in Hong Kong card, but the event was cancelled at the last minute due to financial issues. Morrison won three fights in 1995 before meeting former number one contender Razor Ruddock for the minor IBC heavyweight title, Morrison vs. Ruddock Ruddock. Dropped Morrison to his knees in the first round, but Morrison recovered to force a standing count in round two and compete on even terms for five rounds. 
Both fighters continued to trade power punches in rounds three and four, but Reddick took control in round five, hurting Morrison with several left hooks and keeping him at bay with his jab. In the sixth round, Reddick hurt Morrison with a quick combination, but just as it seemed Morrison was in trouble, he countered with a tremendous hook that put Reddick on the canvas. Reddick regained his feet, but Morrison drove him to the ropes and showered him with an extended flurry of blows. Just as the bell was about to sound, the referee stepped in and declared Morrison the winner by TKO. Morrison vs. Lewis Following his victory over Reddick, Morrison was scheduled to meet former undisputed heavyweight champion Riddick Bowe for Bowe's WBO heavyweight title, but Bowe pulled out after obtaining a more lucrative fight with Evander Holyfield. Shortly after the cancellation of the Bowe Morrison fight, Lewis and Morrison were able to reach an agreement to face one another during the fall of 1995 in Atlantic City, New Jersey, which would see Morrison defending the IBC belt he won. From his fight with Reddick The much-anticipated fight with Lewis, who had also lost his world championship, was finally about to take place. In it, Morrison was knocked out in the sixth round. Both fighters fought a conservative first round with neither man establishing much power-wise, but Lewis was able to effectively and efficiently use his signature left jab to keep Morrison on the defensive and had little trouble with Morrison from the second round onwards. Retirement in February 1996, in the hours before a scheduled bout against Arthur Weathers, the Nevada Athletic Commission determined that Morrison had tested positive for HIV, suspending Morrison from boxing in Nevada. Several days later, Morrison's physician administered a test, which was also positive. At a news conference on February 15, 1996, Morrison said he had contracted HIV because of a permissive, fast, and reckless lifestyle. Morrison stated that he would absolutely never fight again. At another news conference on September 19, 1996, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Morrison announced he wished to fight one last time when he could find an opponent, the proceeds of which would benefit his Knockout AIDS Foundation. A spokesman for the Oklahoma Professional Boxing Advisory Board said Morrison would probably not be permitted to fight in Oklahoma because of his Nevada suspension. Morrison was given an opportunity for a Final bout. By invitation of George Foreman, Morrison traveled to Japan in November 1996 to fight on the undercard, headlined by Foreman himself of his title defense of his lineal WBU championship against Crawford Grimsley. Morrison was allowed to fight as anyone who was HIV positive was not prohibited from fighting in the boxing sport within Japan. However, the bout was agreed to be stopped if Morrison received a cut. Morrison won against Marcus Rode by TKO, at less than two minutes of the first round. Come back in 2007, Morrison began fighting again having tested negative for HIV several times that year, after a decade away from the ring. After passing medical tests in Texas, West Virginia licensed Morrison to fight in that state. So in February of that year he fought and beat John Castle by a second-round TKO, knocking him down in round two with his signature left hook. Morrison vs. Weishar In February 2008, Morrison was cleared to fight a young and undefeated fighter, Matt Weishar, 3-0-2, 1-K-O, in Leon, Mexico on the undercard of Marco Antonio Rubio vs. Jose Luis Serdash. Morrison's age and ring rust were very prominent in the bout, as he nearly stumbled over in round two, but defended well and retained sharp, powerful punches that shook his junior opponent. Weishard took the first round on the cards with his jab keeping Tommy off the attack, but he defeated him by a third-round TKO. After Weishar was beginning to be overwhelmed by Tommy's powerful punches and accurately placed blows to the head beginning in the third, leading to the ref waving off the fight after a hard left hook and right cross. Cancelled bouts in Texas and Montreal following his win over Castle, in April 2007, Morrison passed an additional medical test to be cleared to fight and licensed to fight in the state of Texas. He was scheduled to fight 28-year-old Dale Ortiz, 3-1, at Grand Plaza Hotel in Houston. Due to a paperwork issue, not arriving before the date of the fight, Morrison was pulled from the event card. In January 2011, the RACJ, the Boxing Commission for the Province of Quebec, required that Morrison take a supervised HIV test in advance of a scheduled 2011 fight against Eric Barrick, 3-0. Morrison invited the Quebec Commission to attend a public test, but the commission did not come. 
Morrison stated that if Quebec refused to license him, he would take the dog and pony show somewhere else. Following this Tommy confirmed he was retired for good in an interview of August 2011 as he discussed his career in health, mixed martial arts career Morrison announced he would make his MMA debut after he began a comeback in his boxing career. Despite not intending to make a full career out of MMA, Morrison would be one of the few genuine examples of a former heavyweight boxing champion, alongside Ray Mercer, to dabble as a mixed martial artist to amount any measure of success in the world of MMA. On June 9, 2007, Morrison got into the cage with John Stover, a 340-pound fighter with a 7-2 record on the undercard fights of World Fighting Championships, Rumble and the Red Rocks. He did not need a license to fight as the location was outside the Arizona state jurisdiction, and Stover agreed to the match when it was shown to him that his opponent was allegedly HIV negative. Stover was under restrictions not able to knee, kick, or grapple, and bout was reduced to modified striking match, with boxing and elbows the only types remaining, and Muay Thai practices not involving the lower body remaining. After being pushed into the cage twice and some struggling with Stover throwing a number of ineffectual right hands and a left elbow, Morrison won in the first round by TKO after breaking Stover's nose with an overhand right at just over two minutes into the round. Due to the modified stand-up rules, the fight was to be not considered a mixed martial arts contest, so instead was billed an exhibition fight and did not count towards Morrison's professional MMA record. Morrison fought a bout against professional Corey Wisket Williams as the main event of the Ultimate Explosion 12, the last stand MMA and boxing fight card on January 31, 2009 for the Wyoming State Heavyweight title. The bout was unsanctioned as the state of Wyoming did not possess an athletic commission at the time. As Williams utilized knees and boxing whilst Morrison clinched and boxed, he defeated his opponent by KO at 1 minute and 58 seconds in the first round. The fight was sanctioned by the Warrior Rage Kickboxing Federation. Morrison ended his brief career as a mixed martial artist with an official professional record of 1 0, 1 KO. In 2009, Morrison stated in an interview on MMNews.com that his debut in 2007 was more or less just a favor to his friend, who happened to be the promoter for the event. Thus, why his MMA career was short lived. He voiced respect for the sport and those that participated in it, but he decided to stick with boxing as it was what he knew best, stating he never did or ever intended to make a full transition despite popular belief. Personal life At one point in 1996, Morrison was married to two women at the same time, Don Freeman and Don Gilbert. Morrison had two children by age 19. Tommy and Trisha Morrison were engaged in 2009 and married in 2011. Morrison is the father of professional boxer Kenzie Morrison. Tommy Morrison at Kriller Theater, 2011 Health in 2006, Morrison said his HIV tests had been false positives. The Nevada Commission's Medical Advisory Board reviewed Morrison's 1996 test results and concluded they were ironclad and unequivocal. Morrison said he tried to get a copy of the original test result but was unable to do so, adding, I don't think it ever existed. The commission said Morrison could contact the laboratory, and they would immediately release the results to him. Morrison tested negative for HIV four times in January 2007. On July 22, 2007, the New York Times reported that Morrison took two HIV tests in 2007 and a third specifically for the Times. Ringside doctors, including Nevada's chief ringside physician, implied that the negative results were not based on Morrison's blood. Legal issues In December 1993, Morrison was charged with assault and public intoxication when he allegedly punched a University of Iowa student. Morrison said that the student had been staring at him. Morrison pleaded guilty and paid a $310 fine, but said he was innocent. In October 1996, Morrison pleaded guilty to transporting a loaded firearm in Jay, Oklahoma. He received a six month suspended sentence and a $100 fine. In 1997, an Oklahoma jury convicted him of DUI in an accident that left three people injured. The court ordered Morrison to spend time in treatment. In September 1999, an Oklahoma court gave a two-year suspended sentence for a DUI elevated to felony level by his previous DUI conviction. 
On September 16, 1999, the police stopped Morrison for driving erratically and found drugs and weapons in his car, which resulted in various drugs and firearms charges. While awaiting trial on the September 16 charges, Morrison was again arrested on charges of intoxication and weapon possession while a felon in November 1999. On January 14, 2000, Morrison was sentenced to two years in prison on the September 16 charges. On April 3, 2002, he was sentenced to another year in prison after violating parole in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but was given credit for time previously served. Death in August 2013, Morrison's mother, Diana, said that Tommy had full-blown AIDS and was in his final days. She also stated that Morrison had been bedridden for over a year. Morrison's wife, Tricia, allegedly did not believe Morrison had AIDS. On September 1, 2013, Morrison died at the Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska, at the age of 44. According to the Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services, Morrison's cause of death was cardiac arrest, resulting from multi-organ failure due to septic shock caused by a Pseudomonas aeruginosa infection. Legacy The World Boxing Organization said people would remember Morrison best for his dangerous punching power and especially his left hook. After his death, the International Boxing Hall of Fame said Morrison brought so much excitement and energy to the heavyweight division in the 1990s. Two-time heavyweight champion Pinklon Thomas said Morrison hit like a baseball bat and rated him ahead of Mike Tyson as the hardest puncher he had faced. Boxing writer Lee Groves ranked Morrison third on his list of 10 best left hookers. He also featured on a list of 100 best punchers of the past 100 years on the 23rd of May, 2023. Morrison was added to the boxing video game Undisputed in the heavyweight division.